Okay, uh, today I'm playing around with uh, the bits and pieces for uh, setting up a complete pipeline, you know, a CI pipeline, to build my website. Uh, now, I think uh, Monday, uh, I was messing around with some of the individual tasks, and uh, yesterday, amongst other things, uh, I was just tidying up uh, uh, some of my desktop, which has got <laughs> a bit out of hand. Uh, today, uh, we're going to look at um, a couple of things. Uh, the first thing I want to do is, if you remember on Monday, I said about gems. Um, at the moment, uh, I've got a gem which encapsulates the uh, Salty Vagrant website theme. Uh, and I want to have that available. Now, I could uh, set it up and publish it to uh, Ruby Gems, but I don't want to do that. And for a couple of reasons. One, it's not of much use to anybody but me. Uh, and two, um, because I want to be able to publish it uh, fairly regularly, uh, I, I want to do it locally, uh, so I'm not reliant on any external suppliers. Uh, this is a theme, by the way. Um, I have a real uh, thing about this. Uh, when I was setting systems up for corporations, uh, one of the first things I would always do do is try to get uh, repositories and things like that set up locally um, if I was working in uh, a software development project. Um, and the reason for that is very straightforward. Uh, it means that although you are using more resources, uh, it's better in the long run because you've got more stability. Uh, if the internet goes down or that supplier goes down uh, you're not stuck uh, and, and things being under your own control um, although it, it comes across as slightly kind of control freakish um, it it has some justification uh, and, and that justification is it's much easier to diagnose a problem um, with a service if you have complete access to that service so for example um, although things like gitlab.com and github.com are excellent services and on the whole very reliable they're not immune from downtime um, now the problem is when they go down uh, that's all very well and good uh, but you then have to rely entirely on their motivation to get back up, which admittedly is a, it's a strong motivation. Um, but nevertheless, you're at their mercy, and you can often not tell how, how long it's going to be until their service is back up and running to the extent that you can use it. Um, So, this one, let me just take back of like the stream and just not, yeah. Uh, that's very weird. Uh, yes, so uh, getting things under your control. Now, the, the way, I, I mean, it's a very simple idea. Uh, it can be a bit of a dog's breakfast to set up sometimes. Um, but all you're doing is, let's say you rely on github.com. Okay, uh, now obviously if github.com is, is offline or you know is degraded for some reason, uh, then you're, you're buggered. Uh, it's much better, in my not so humble opinion, uh, that you don't rely on anything 100% out here on the internet. Uh, what you do is within your organization, uh, you provide your own Git repo machine service uh, and you work 
you know, your, your develop, you know, all your development teams all work from that. Okay, so everything in here uh, is is you know your organisation. Uh, if you want to have GitHub out here, then make it part of your CI/CD process uh, that you you know you sync out to here uh, to update your public GitHub repositories. Um, you know, for, for other people. So if you are working on this project, then th this can be part of your uh, deployment chain. Uh, so when, once everything's okay in your Git repo, you can then deploy it out to GitHub as part of that process. Uh, and that includes things like updating the wikis and so on, uh, and the, the readme's and all, all these other good stuff. Um, uh, it all becomes part of your deployment process to send that out to GitHub. So you don't rely on that for anything internal. This also gives you uh, a very good quality gate here uh, to make sure that your public facing uh, repository, the one in GitHub, uh, is clean and well presented. And in other words, projects uh, your business's image um, rather than, in my experience, uh, the horrible dog's breakfast that is usually associated with uh, yeah, you know, project work. Um, so it just gives you another level of control on, for example, what people see in your public repository, and uh, it means that you're not relying on anything. So you know, more commonly, your internet service will go down, uh, particularly if you are you've been working in the garden. Um, uh, particularly if you. Uh, uh, you know, like me, you're a small business, then you are very reliant on it, uh, and they do go down from time to time. Uh, touch wood, mine's pretty good. Um, but between you know your internet connection going down and uh, you know the service provider uh, going down, uh, and and I mean GitHub again, it's it's a fairly reliable service when all, all things considered, but you can guarantee that it will go down most awkward moment uh, so it's worth having this buffer now uh, a lot of people don't go to the trouble of creating this and they will just work directly in their github or their gitlab repository uh, and the same thing goes for things like gems uh, so there is a, a website ruby ruby gems dot uh, that hosts gem files package files for Ruby projects, and a lot of people use it. Uh, the same goes for Hub okay. uh, dot com, where people host their uh, Docker images. Now, Docker, that's a good example, because Docker uh, recently, uh, for good business reasons, uh, said that any image which hadn't been accessed for six months uh, would be removed. Um, which now puts the onus on you. Uh, uh, this is uh, the unpaid tiers. Um, this put the onus on you to uh, manage your um, files in there to decide whether or not you want to touch them periodically in order to make sure that they're kept alive. Um, uh, but again, that's a good that's a good example of a, a change of terms of service by a supplier, which may fundamentally change the way you use the service. So again, you know, there's absolutely nothing stopping you uh, from mirroring uh, the functionality of uh, Docker internally. Uh, and what we're going to do today is we're going to look at creating a Ruby Gems repository um, in order to provide that buffering. Now, quite rightly, some people will say, well, hang on a minute. Uh, if I create all these internal services, doesn't doesn't that mean that I'm now uh, going to have an aggravation of uh, maintaining them, keeping them up? To the, yeah, it does, uh, and that's undoubtedly something you need to consider. Um, but if you're a small organisation, the chances are you don't need to worry too much about that because uh, you know. The, the criticality of doing updates and so on is less of an issue. If you're a large enterprise, the chances are you've got teams of people that are already looking after the services anyway, and all you're doing is adding uh, more services to that farm. 
secondly, if you've got your infrastructure sorted out so that it's being properly monitored and maintained by an automated system, uh, like for example Salt or Puppet or any of these, or, or indeed Docker, um, uh, and we'll talk about monitoring and things like that as we go through the course, um, then you know th this becomes a non-issue. And the benefits of being able to diagnose your own problems um, is is tremendous. Uh, you know, if my if my uh, you know private Git repo goes down or becomes unavailable to my internal developers, I can investigate. You know, is it a network problem? Is it a DNS problem? Is it something wrong with the repository itself? Um, yeah, hopefully. The majority of those things are already being automatically monitored anyway, so you should just have a report saying the DNS service has failed or the DNS service isn't resolving this name for some reason. Um, so you should have a heads up before it becomes an issue anyway. Um, but even assuming you haven't got that heads up or some reason one of your monitors is not doing its job or you haven't written that monitor yet, um, you can at least uh, you know, diagnose the problem. Whereas these things over here, tremendous though they are as, as services, are a black box. You don't know what's gone wrong. Furthermore, uh, in a lot of cases, they are not the principal business of the organizations that maintain them. You know, do Docker uh, is not Docker's principal business. And their principal business is the provision of Docker uh, system and Docker Compose and Swarm and all that kind of stuff. Uh, that's the yeah, hub.docker is, if you like, a courtesy service uh, and something which encourages people to use Docker, uh, but is not their principal business. Uh, similarly, RubyGems is a courtesy function. Uh, in, in actual fact, it's, it's a contribution supported service which makes it even more of an issue uh, github is now microsoft um, owned uh, now you may have philosophical problems with, uh, uh, which again is not an issue when your principal repository is internal all you're doing is changing where you're publishing it um it does yeah it's not fundamentally a core part of your internal development and management process. You decoupled it in, in the terminology of software engineering. Um, so yes, I on balance, although you do have the additional costs involved of uh, the resources to be made available. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, uh, RPM repositories and things like that are similarly. Uh, yeah, you, you really want to break that linkage at some point. Um, now, uh, handheld high here. Early on, I am not beyond using these things. In fact, you'll see that during uh, uh, these streams, I use these services a lot, uh, especially for non critical stuff where I don't give a damn. Um, you know, it's not an issue for me if, if the service goes down for 24 hours. You know, I don't, it doesn't, I don't care. Um, but if it's a critical part of my business model, if it's, if, yeah, if it's important to my service, um, then I do care. I want redundancy. I want the ability to be able to look at the logs and, find, and know myself what's going on. Um, I want to be able to fail over to another service if I need to, that kind of thing. Okay, um, so that's that's the justification for what we're going to do. Um, so what are we going to do today? Well, we're going to set up uh, this thing uh, here, uh, which is going to be... Uh, a buffer between the external uh, world of Ruby uh, and I want the ability to be able to publish my own gem, in this case my sort of theme, the repository. Now, what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to uh, set up just one repository, I'm going to set up two. Uh, I'm going to set up my own internal And I'm going to set up another one, which is going to be proxy. And this will be a proxy for, in the first instance, 
and but I could put you know other external third party repositories in there as well. Uh, and uh, my internal development will then access these two as their principal uh, repositories. And they're going to proxy through uh, in this case. Uh, so what will happen is if I access you know uh, gem you know x dot gem uh, it will first of all look in my internal repository, nothing there. It will go to the proxy, nothing there. The proxy will then go to RubyGems. Ah, finds x.gem in RubyGems. It will then copy it into here as a as a as a cache proxy, uh, and then serve it out to project. So that the next time somebody calls up x.gem, it just goes to here. Doesn't bother. The final copy. Uh, now, in order to do that, uh, there are a couple of things. First of all, by default, your Ruby environment will be set up to have some sources. So you can see here, I've done gem uh, This is this is uh, a, my default uh, developer environment. Uh, it's got Ruby already installed on it as part of the Debian install. Uh, and you can see that by default, it will go straight to rubygems.org. Cool. Uh, we're going to change this uh, so that in actual fact, it goes to our um, proxy service. Now, there are several ways I could do that. One is I can insist that everyone uh, comes in here, changes this source to for example, um, whatever, uh, let's call it, let's call it uh, gems dot dot com, uh, which will be this proxy, for example, uh, and I'll call it internal gem dot multiverse com which will be this one uh, so i could i could insist that everyone puts uh, those two in and takes out the ruby gems or uh, for everything on this side of my system i could make ruby org actually point to this server here uh, that way i don't have to remember um I don't have to remember to make these changes. The only tricky part about doing that is, of course, you also need to, because it's HTTPS, you would need to have an internal certificate, <clears throat> um, which in and of itself is not a major problem. Uh, we'll talk about creating internal certificates, but you, you could create your own internal certificate for RubyGems.org um, and you could distribute your own CA authority to anyone inside your network. Um, so it, that's doable with certain caveat. Um, it requires a little bit of uh, discipline uh, to do that, but it's doable. Okay. Um, so we could do that, uh, but for now we're going to just do it this way. Okay, we're going to do it with the GEMS and the internal. Uh, so that we know which repositories we're referring to and we will simply within our ruby environments we will replace these two okay and as a safety precaution just to make sure that people don't accidentally go to an external source i'm going to make uh, rubygems.org resolve to a non-existent address and the non-existent address of choice typically is 0.0.0, .0. Now, because we are working in a development environment, um, what the easiest, the quickest way of doing any diddling with DNS is to just put it into etc. hosts. Um, so we can set it up so that etc. hosts on uh, the development machine uh, will just resolve through to those addresses. That gives us a concept. Now, I would advocate you doing this sort of thing. Um, 
rather than, uh, I mean, the, the, the typical way people do this is they go, oh, well, what I'll do is I will set, you know, I'll set these two services up as, for example, uh, you know, Docker containers, uh, and I'll have two Docker containers, uh, and I will just, um, yeah, I'll set, I'll set these up to access on localhost, and then, you know, port 9292, and this one will be three, for example, uh, and then I, I just add those in as my sources. The problem with doing that is uh, that the further down the road you get, um, for example, when you start setting up your CI CD chain, when you're trying to test that and you end up with these local hosts in there, uh, the problem then is when you publish all of this uh, uh, to your test environments, you, you suddenly find, oh, I've got to go through and change all of these uh, all, all of these path names, uh, sorry, all of these uh, DNS entries uh, from localhost some port to whatever the IP address, or whatever the DNS name is going to be for the final server. So, uh, as I keep saying, uh, think about the end of the process. And the end of the process is uh, I want to have a proper DNS name for the services. There are other ways of doing this, uh, but that's what I'm going to aim for in this solution. Okay, so if I were in a large enterprise at this point, I would probably be thinking to myself, okay, well, uh, you know, are these going to be Docker containers or are they going to be actual servers? Doesn't matter if I've got this, but what it does, what does matter is the way you now go about anticipating the release of your system. Um, you're going to have to start planning how this, how these services are going to be deployed into your uh, internal production environment uh, and how they're going to be used. So it, it will vary hugely from organization to organization. Uh, but typically, is first of all, uh, you need to know if these services already exist in your organization. Uh, and the only way you're going to get that is by going to your operations people and saying, is there a service I could use? If there isn't, the chances are there's going to be a whole load of discussions about, oh, well, you know, we need to allocate resources to do this, we need to do that, we need to do the other, and it becomes a right three-act drama. But it's got to be done by somebody at some point. Uh, typically, end up with some sort of change request you'll need to get approval so it, you know it becomes a real hassle but the main thing from a development point of view is to at least get you know, a stake in the ground to say I want these at some point I want these two DNS names to resolve such that uh, I find a gem repository on each one okay and this one I want to be a caching proxy and this one I want to be right. <clears throat> uh, at least that puts a stake in the ground then uh, and you can get the ball rolling on providing the services behind these two names uh, doing you know, jumping through whatever hoops are demanded of your organization in the meantime you can be getting on doing something productive namely setting everything up so it's using these two names rather than and this is typically what happens it will go down this route and they start out with localhost because that's the easy way of doing it uh, and then they're all ready to go ready to release the system and the band hammer comes down we can't do that uh, we need to set these services up we need to make sure they're available blah 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 or you should have been using internal ones all along you know there are a whole load of things that happen just as you're about to release your system or, or you know your build system or it can be a real pain in the ass. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> so, uh, it's always best to think ahead, uh, and this is one of the ways we do it, is by having uh, uh, having you know, the, these things in place and ready to go. Right, so with that in mind, uh, for, for the purposes of this exercise, uh, I'm going to set these up just as docker uh, 
Docker instances. So you can see. Um, let me see. What have I got? Okay, uh, let's come out like that. Not sure. My wacking's running on my dot. Um, I'd evidently pulled it at some point. Concourse instance, and I've got an Nginx running on there. The reason I've got Nginx running on there is because is it is serving up a this site, uh, uh, this thing here. <clears throat> okay, so that's the reason for Nginx running on there. Uh, and we're going to we're going to use Nginx ultimately to act as a proxy through to uh, through to these two services. Um, maybe it just saves having port numbers on, okay? Because <clears throat> DNS for all of its uh, uh, wonders, okay, would would only get us so far, okay? So just adding a DNS entry is going to get rid of localhost and replace it with internal gems dot. I'm still going to need these port numbers. Um, in order to provide the services because we're going to have two, two docker instances uh, so uh, to, to do that what we'll do is we will actually add into the nginx configuration uh, a a couple of proxy services uh, which will allow us to front this as if it were actual services so let's start out by uh, creating the two uh, docker containers. Now I'm going to do this in a very, very simplistic way for now. I'm just going to run them directly. Uh, and in order to do this, I suppose, port to This is where I'll just check the name of this. Um, Uh, I think uh, oh, it's called gem in a box. Gem in a box. Uh, uh, right. So, uh, is that instance? Oh, no. Might be it, T Y U, but maybe not. You can see there's lots of people done it. Uh, let's just go to oh, Docker. And, no. Uh, what was it? Gem in a box. And that seems to be the most popular. Ah, fuck it. Uh, just, let's just do this one. So you can see here, uh, it's just run like that. Now, obviously, I want add configuration. So I'm going to do that. Here we go. Uh, config.ru because uh, we want access to the config.ru so that we can change the um, configuration uh, go to the Another thing you can do is set this up. Oh, there you go. Uh, 
but they, they actually provide a, a, a Docker file. So we could build our own Docker image from two layers. Uh, but you can see here that config.ru uh, is the meat and potatoes. Uh, and what we need to add is the setting. Yes, here we go. Uh, so, it's, so we can either set it up. Variable like that, uh, set it up directly. Okay. Uh, the, I, I notice it's not generalizable, so we're, we're kind of stuck with Ruby gems or nothing, which is hmm, which it will do. Because ninety nine point nine nine percent of the stuff we want is on Ruby gems. Witness the fact that very seldom change gem sources. Uh, right. So this is evidently uh, a build. And we're going to want two of these. One of them with the proxy setting. One of them without. Um, so let's start running the one with out make it a face with authentication so all I want really? and I'm gonna call that Internal then. and help type the run command and then the second one's a little bit more tricky because we need to provide it with a config file or with I suppose just for a proof of concept the easiest way to do it would be to there we go we can just do this add that for now uh, it doesn't have the, the sort of graceful failover but uh, which would, would be nice, um, but for now, uh, we'll do the job. So what we want is basically the same command, except we're going to add in the expression. Oops. There we go. Now the other thing of course is I need to take this 9292 and map it to 9293. Whoops. Oh dear Mark, really odd. Okay. Right, so seriously. So run, run it as a daemon, uh, mapping our local host 9293 onto the containers 9292. We're defining the Ruby Gems proxy this time. Uh, we want the name, of course, to be let's just gem. Uh, so I'll do. Okay, so now uh, we've got our two services running: one at nine two three and one at nine. Two. Now we can now go into uh, this machine's etc. I'm really not having a good day. Uh, and we just need to add them on as local host. 
uh, I suppose if I was being really polite, I'd have a public interface to this, but everything's got to be on this machine for now because this is just a proof of concept. Uh, so we want to internal gems dot salty pigment. Oh, now we can't uh, because it's all being done on the local host. I don't want to map rubygems.com to be 000 on this machine. If I do, it will probably break the container. Um, so I'm going to leave it alone on this machine because uh, I set everything up. So now uh, I should be able to uh, and I've really got no idea what I'm doing ah, I can't resolve the host hmm. oh uh, right. Oh, there we go. Uh, so that's our uh, gems, and that's actually our internal gems. <coughs> uh, now, there are a couple of things to notice here. Uh, first of all, you'll notice that. Uh, I've got this coming back as gems, and that's because that will be the first reverse lookup, I guess. Uh, no, it's because that's what I used to access. Uh, so this one's 93. Getting 90 down there. Blah, 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 blah. That's all. It's all a bit of a dog's breakfast at the moment. <clears throat> However, what we now need to do is set up our Nginx configuration. Now, to do that, uh, I'm going to uh, look into sorty bait and X. And it's uh, the etc file on here, I would guess. Is it all done in one daisy? Uh, done. <clears throat> nope, I've actually left it with all the defaults in there. Uh, engine. Comfortable D. And there's the default so that's what we're currently using default uh, uh, <clears throat> that can't uh, yes it can be right uh, I think the way this nginx was run i'd mounted i mounted this site as user blah 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 uh, Uh, 
strange brain. Um, Docker info. Right. Uh, I mean, I was trying to build what we were interested in. Uh, here we go. So we found that underscore site into usership HTML, which is fine for what it's doing, um, but uh, it's not good enough for what we want to do now. Uh, and the simplest way to get around that is to take that default code, bring it out, map the conf.d dead of the site, and then just change everything in that. Having said that, we're still going to mount those directories somewhere. And of course, the containers know about each other. Uh, there are several ways of doing that. Um, if I go and just connect back into, okay, so if I look at um, those host names again, uh, I don't think ping's installed. Norse kernel installed? Yeah, oh, it is. Oh, what do you know? All right. Yeah, I thought so. This brings me to a point about uh, asking questions on Google. Uh, it really tits me off. Uh, people will ask questions like this uh, inside inside a Docker container. Uh, is the host etc. file available? Etc. Host file available. Why would you why would you ask that question? Uh, I mean, the only reason I could think you would have asked that question is if you didn't have access to Docker. And if you didn't have access to Docker on a Linux machine, uh, it kind of has to be. Um, then why are you asking the question? Okay, so assuming you're using Docker, there you go. Just do it. And you can find out. Uh, uh, You'll find that this has got. Ah. That won't be installed. Cat will. Uh, so you know you can see what's what's installed. So none of the none of the uh, names we created um, are being resolved uh, uh, at this level, uh, and that raises a problem. Uh, that problem being uh, that our cunning plan so far has been to uh, uh, it's not it's not a problem problem it's a wrinkle to deal with so what I've done is on the host uh, I've set the etc host to resolve uh, the the two host names of I'm not going to do them into both gems and so I've, I've done the etc host on the host, right? But then I've created and I've created two uh, Docker containers, one on port 9292, and one three on the host, right? Uh, so they're easily accessible from the host. And now the idea is to use the nginx. Okay, as a proxy for these two services. 
start nginx container or in other words the nginx process doesn't have access to this etc host furthermore if i just have it resolve to the local host it's going to resolve to the nginx so how do we get around that well the easiest way of getting it i suspect is just to make nginx share the host's stack and how do we do that do that hmm. I suppose it was recently not. Okay. So let's uh Where was that thing to do? To... All right, I'm just going to change the, the way this. Okay, so all I've really done is done that map. I think everything else was fairly vanilla. We can find out. Let's stop SVX and then Docker run. Why is that? Oh, no, playing up. Uh. All right. Uh, do you know what I mean? Oh. oh. Idiot. I'm sorry to pop. Right. Okay, so hopefully that hasn't broken what it was doing. That. That's the case. Funny. Yeah. Eighty-three's match to eighty eighty. Why? Having said that, am I? Yeah, I am in the wrong. Yeah. Um. Hmm. Am I? Website port is eighty eighty. Yeah, I'm definitely. Uh, okay. Huge.
Okay, so we definitely haven't got. Right, I have got something in that side, haven't I? Okay. That's because I haven't externalized that eighty ball idiot. Okay. I haven't the problem. Right, okay, so that was a bit of a right. So we want to uh well there's a demon, but we also name it engine X and I want the port map in eighty. Alright, now it should work. Okay, now I've got my fucking brains out of my ass. Okay, so that's back to where we were. But what I really want to do right, what I really want to do is well, I've done this port mapping like this, also wants to make the network into a host network. Think I do Docker uh, network IP address on code. Effect the ignored. Right, so we don't need that anymore. We can just do just do network host. So now it will actually share the host network, uh, which means that, that should still be working. It's basically excellent, right? But the difference now is that log into here, uh, it's now sharing the etc. host file because it's sharing the entire host network stack. Um, not something that you know I would necessarily do in a production environment but for the purposes of testing it's exactly what we need okay because it now means that uh, anything that nginx uh, needs from the host network stack like for example these two uh, host names it, it can get right so that's step one Uh, step two, uh, we've got to externalize the configuration. Uh, now, uh, the, the, the quickest way, actually, oops, uh, oh, that's another thing I've got to remove on. Right. Uh, yeah. Um, actually, this is a copy command. B. S. Etc. 
There's our default there. Okay, so this is this is the standard default. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to mess around with this so that we can add in the two proxy locations. Um, and they're going to look something like this block here, uh, except we'd set a proxying uh, by a file extension, we're going to proxy port number. So let's try uh, the, if you like, the smallest possible. Uh, I'm not going to dig around with headers and stuff like that at this point because I don't think we need to. Uh, so if we say location, um, actually we, we know we can't do that, can we? We need to add in a new post. But let's get rid of let's get rid of that. So that's our default. So let's make a directory for uh, etc. Then configure Green is not my oh, stuff in there. Now And so, so the reason I've done that is I can now take that etc. nginx and actually map that to the etc. nginx. And I suppose if I was being polite, yeah, let's do it uh, to be consistent. Uh, and then right. uh, so now we can. Oh, do uh, a, a new configuration file, one for each of the hosts, or we can just do like a gems configuration file with two virtual hosts in there. Uh, now, uh, if we need to know the particular syntax, uh, nginx uh, virtual host proxy path and uh, the easy way to set up a reverse proxy. I'm hoping that it's just going to change it. Oh dear, there we go. So this this is the sort of thing. Oh. Uh, but this is not we need to also add in the host of course so we're not by any means doing this the right the right way here we go so this is this this is the sort of thing if you take that whole block and we can create uh, and stop and do two blocks of that. Ah. Uh, 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 server name will be internal gems. Hold on. Port number. Oh, ah. 
Very good. There she's working. Was it 9292? Oops. 90. This one will be this one will be and then she type to the dot com. Well, in nineteen ninety three. Yep. Mm, let's try that. So now I'll go back to my window. And I think I left it. Oh, this will do that. Stop. Next. I need to change something. Uh, let's go back to our Docker run code. Uh, we're still going to have to map this site in because that's the default website. But we also want to map it for the volume, which will be now uh, we're going to map in. Uh, now we need to map in the, the full. Uh, working, I suppose, technically, we not do that. This, uh, this is because the volume mappings require full path names, uh, etc. So, um, uh, uh, slash D, and we're going to map that to etc. slash nginx D. Um, and we really only need to be uh, and hopefully hopefully that will work <laughs> okay so it's running so at least we haven't screwed it up royally uh, right and it's still working so it hasn't messed that up but now, can we get to? Uh, now I can't access it from there. Because uh, host name it with this via here. So gems dot com no port number, and we're getting there. You notice that it's. The 9293 instance. If I curl the internal gems, getting ooh, loads more stuff. Ah, that's interesting. I'm actually getting <laughs> the default website, so I've obviously not entered that, that server detail. Please go back to Nginx Talk to. Ah, gray, salty gray, gramped. There we go, 1992. Right. Now we need to change the gem sources. Right. Uh, gem sources are currently blah blah blah. Okay, now Ruby definitely not my full take. Let's say Ruby one five four six and to be add delete. Okay. 
we go. Here we go. Gem source is minus A to append a new gem source. No. Oh, it's R to remove. Okay. So we need to do gem sources to append. Four hundred four. Hmm. I misspelled something. Wrong. Uh, extra I need to do. Uh, Did not need any credentials to. I didn't. I understand that. Why is my pro not working? Hmm. Okay, let's just make sure that it's actually working there. Ah, right, okay, so we're just not getting, we're not getting anything. So our Nginx uh, run-up is kind of pointless. Have I externalized those two points? Uh, Why isn't Gem in a box serving stuff up? Um, I evidently missed something. Oh, uh, ah, yes. Well, I didn't. I didn't actually. Uh, well, uh, it should store them inside them. Uh, da, 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 da. I've got the other. Oh, I think we did. Just work. So we're getting something served, but we're not. 
getting the required response to add it as a gem source even when we access it uh, directly so there's something not quite a uh, let's just have a nose uh, in the pot. Let's try again. And you saw you saw back there that it was Debian based. Uh, uh, that's the config. Uh, which we are going to end up screwing around for uh, at least for. Um, let's make that gem in a box data. Uh, empty <laughs> oh really? No, 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 no. Uh, hmm. Okay, so there's not much in there. So what? It, this uh, the change of source is obviously expected at this gzip. Now it could be that Gemini Box provides that dynamically. Should provide. Uh, but it sure as hell isn't in there as well. Let this is where Google is useful. Let's check. Uh, it cheated slightly. Okay. okay, well, I can understand not adding. Okay, let me then be bar. Was I doing internal? I can understand that if there's nothing in there. Uh, okay, I can, I can kind of understand that now. I was just going for the do nine two and the internal gem and if I did gems I would expect it to proxy 
Let's try gem source. What's the source? It's uh, what is make sense? Gem. If I do that. That's a bit more disappointing because I'm hoping that it would just be through to get that spec. Hmm. That's a bit more. Bit more disappointing. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can always start preceding them. Yes, why doesn't it just work? Uh, Oh, it's done. I mean, I could precede it, but kind of means it's not working out. Um, what was the name of that? Actually, that's good, isn't it? Was I a bit disappointing? Um, hmm. Expect this um, what is the config are you within Hmm. I thought that in that 
Add. Oh, wait a minute. Yes, if you set the movie gems properly, then it should pull gems. Org. Go in here. Yep. Um, and that is true. Isn't it just proxy? Hmm. All right, let's try something else. Let's try. Try doing it the other way then. Right. Uh, go in here. Mm. Here's our Ruby gem, which we really want. Now, So it's multi vagrant. So according to this gem in the box supports the standard gem cutter push. Evidently that requires to have an account. Hmm. Even though we specified no authenticate. Okay, well let's try this then. Uh, um, install, oh. install,
near the end of playtime. Is taking off it. Oh, of course, I would like it in. Now, the question is, Kenny, is this thing home or is it still working? Hmm. In a long time, isn't it? Uh, in the ordinary long time. Right. Let's just try as is and see what we can do. In a box. Same with the previous instruction. You don't need to specify. Mm. Interesting. All right, that makes sense. Sorry. Okay, um,
bit of confusion in. Oh, oh, wait. Ah, oh, I've done it again. In gems, not in gems. Okay, so how do I now change the inner box? Gems. Oh. Error. Could not find a gem in package. Specify a gem name railway. The instructions say gem airbox minus G. Do I need to well, then provide a not very clear of a schema that never makes more sense. Hey, what do you know? It works. Now the question is, can I add that? I can I add that? Should have a capability now, shouldn't it? With an S. Oh, look at that. Well, at least we've now got a way of serving our own oh, gem. It's a dog's breakfast, though, isn't it? Having to install that in a box and also, uh, why? That having said that, it would be nice. Yeah, I haven't helped the case by making a complete bre dog's breakfast of this. Uh, I just can't. Let's make that. Make sure that uh, 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 <laughs> Okay, so it's it's obviously not in the mesh. Maybe. 
be the first name. Okay. No. I pushed in server that doesn't have any accounts. Right. Which doesn't work without an existing API key. Mm -hmm. Yeah, blah blah blah. All right. I'm creating a file like this. Directory dot gem credentials. Really? Creating credentials skips over the prompt for credentials. All right, let's try that. Why slash dot slash Here, yeah, don't put prefix. Maybe um, Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Gem credentials. Okay.
Yeah, they're in the end. Let's put it off something. Yeah, there. That's obviously not part of it. Oh, look at that. Good. Okay, so we can do it with push, but we need that dummy credentials. Hmm. Okay, that kind of sucks ass, but. And. It doesn't address the problem of the proxy not serving up the capabilities. So we can't add it. Now we can do it manually. Uh, so we can do something like this. Do it manually. But it's a bit, it's a bit hacktastic, isn't it? Uh. That's quite some time ago. I thought that it would work on I wouldn't know. Mm, I think there's something more to Yeah. You know what, it's very difficult to work with you. <laughs> eh? It's hard enough working with you up here anyway. Mm -hmm. But when you're doing all of that moving around, it really makes it difficult. All right, let's see if we can crack this. Um, I mean, the first thing that springs to me is that in that environment, have I misspelled it? Yeah, I mean, I did copy it directly. Uh, we could try doing the configuration the other way around, I suppose, and mounting the config RU. Uh, I mean, that would probably be a better way to go in the long run. But, oh, I don't know why that doesn't, why that really changes. Um, well, I could try doing one. Let's see what that does it, I suppose. I assume I could do some German call. Gems at the store. Tilt. Was host. Was it? Again, stop. Salty. Cool. Go to 
Okay, I understand that. I'm going to add it to the sources. It needs to have the cause in it. Doesn't it? Now can I do an install for a specific host? Can I install from um, How to put up. Then sources add fine. That's fine as long as the bloody thing will add. Uh, and we could do it that well. Uh, So we've, we've cracked getting our own privacy, but the uh, the proxies are proxying. Um, so I think the answer is to actually manipulate the config. That being the case, uh, we will take a short break. I think at this point, because uh, because <laughs> you want feeding, don't you? Right. Well, you, you're the one who got down. Right. You wanted to get down. I know it's dinner time anyway. Right, let's get you some dinner and then we'll have a look at this config. <laughs> 